So uh, I guess let's go ahead and uh, just give you guys a brief minute here, and then for a moment we'll just go through and kind of set a couple of things up here. But to give you guys a little bit of context on what you're doing here is, um, so this board is very similar to like a deluxe. We've got Wi-Fi equipped it on here. It's actually dual band, but um, we're going to be essentially doing a media stream directly from this system to this notebook. Um, now this is different than just receiving. We're actually going to be taking the file and streaming out, choosing our actual receiver point, which is going to be, for instance, this, this uh, netbook right here, and we're going to be showing that, and we could control it also from the desktop. Um, you could imagine that you could do this also if, let's say, you had a DLNA-compliant television, mm -hmm. um, or you had a receiver that had DLNA-compliant wireless pass-through that then would pass it also over to your TV. Um, so very cool. You could take all that stuff that you have stored on your desktop and be able to shoot it out across your network. Very cool. So, um, so are we going to try? We're going to get this on this camera, Ken. Is that what we want to try to do? Yeah. Or I mean, we can just pick it up and show it as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Rotate it around. Yeah. No, no worries. They're going to ask for after we get done with this. They want to ask about that new Zono card that you gave away too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That. What was the model? Uh, yeah, we. Uh, yes, there, there's going to actually be two. There's a couple of actually brand new Zonar cards that are coming out. We just launched our Zonar Essence 1, which I think you guys checked out at CES. It was yep. really high in USB DAC. That's awesome. We've got an upcoming Zonar Thunder FX. Uh, we have the Zonar Phoebus, which is the first ROG sound card uh, that we're releasing. And then we also have uh, the Zonar DGX and DSX. Okay. Um, and those are very similar to the DX and to the DG that have already been on the market, except that they're um, PCIe versions with some slight updates. Okay. Them. Yeah. Very cool. I like I like Scott. I love my audio, so it's very cool. Uh, yes, PCI by one. Yes, the the sound cards are PCI by one. Okay, so we're gone ahead and connected to our network here. Go ahead and turn on our netbook. There are several aspects of Wi-Fi Go, though, correct? Correct. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll actually show. Uh, we won't cover all of them, but if we were to actually go into the Wi-Fi Go suite, um, there's a lot of different functions that we have. We're going to predominantly just focus, I think, on a couple of quick ones, such as I think the DLNA Media Hub and the file transfer, I think, are pretty cool. But we do have some other functions that are also available. So um, definitely for you guys that are users out there, I'd love to really hear your feedback. Um, always feel free to definitely drop them. I, I definitely take actually time to take a look through the posted comments on Ryan's reviews for our products, as well as in the forums. But you guys can always head over to our Facebook and Twitter pages also and, and leave us comments there too, which I, I actively check out. So here we've got uh, Wi-Fi Go. I don't know what is causing that, but uh, let's see how to use the magnifier too. Oh, yep. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Get to the magnifier. It's out here too. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so here we're at the desktop. We're going to go ahead and we've got our netbook here. Maybe I can turn it around once it's open there. Yeah, I can. Uh... Well, just, just set it in the middle of the table. I might have to zoom that out, though. Yeah. Well, that kind of works. We'll get the point across there. Oh, are you talking about the front shot or the overhead? Because we can do the overhead, too. Okay, so we should be connected here to our network. So if I go ahead and go here to my Wi-Fi Go. I can uh, go ahead and select my receiver, which it sees right here. This is my Asus PC. So okay. I'm just going to go ahead and select that. So do you have to install some software on this? No, because uh, the receiver, as long as it has DNA compliance, it will see it as a DLNA device. So okay. here, uh, Windows uh, Windows Media Player has DNA compliance built into it. Okay. So the operating system inherently right. has it. So if you run Windows 7, even if you didn't install anything, you already have that built in. Okay. Uh, but let's say if you had like um, an Apple device, like a, um, a tablet, like an iPad, I guess, uh, you would have the you would have to install our our software that we make available in their app store mm -hmm. because there's no built-in DLNA support in gotcha. iOS. Um, same thing if you had like a transformer, you could do the same thing. But once again, there's no built-in DLNA into that OS, so you'd have to download our our software. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and select it. Once we select it, we could go ahead and let's say uh, pick pick any one of the videos here. It's referencing our my documents libraries. So we have music, we have video, and we have photos. 
available to us. Clonk wants to know uh, if it's an issue that he lives in Australia. You know what? Normally it would be, but I like you, Clonk, so I'm still going to go ahead and <laughs> ship it all the way to Australia, just for you. <laughs> so uh, once we go ahead and select that, you can see that it shows the name of the files that we have selected here. And uh, we've already gone ahead and picked our receiver, so we can go ahead and click play. It's going to go ahead and initiate the stream. And we are, we're using, you can use, can use any router with this as long as it is DLNA, it supports DLNA pass-through? That's correct, as long as it supports DLNA pass-through. So you can see right now, we're streaming uh, this video. <laughs> this is a trailer for a movie JJ is very excited about. Yeah, yeah, JJ is very excited about that. <laughs> um, so we can see right here that it's now streaming real time and we have control. So if I actually, let's say I wanted to go ahead and make a volume adjustment right here, I can go ahead and make a volume adjustment. Huh. So you heard the volume actually go down, right? So we can make that adjustment. I can stop it. You can see it just stopped. And we've now stopped that. Um, and we can even make it actually more interesting where you can, if you install, let's say, the application to your phone, I can initiate the control from here to then my other device. So from your phone, you can tell your computer to send a video to, send to the, the laptop stream, right, because, or to a TV or right. to whatever DLNA. Because here I've got a big device. old, I mean, well, I don't have a huge amount of storage here. I've got this really nice high-speed Runcore uh, MSAT SSD, right? Mm -hmm. But on a normal system, I might have like a two terabyte hard drive, right? So I've got tons of storage. On my phone, it would be effective to keep all that stuff on here, but maybe I want to still initiate the control. One of the other items that we have right here on this uh, screen interface, if we go back to the magnifier, is going to be uh, file transfer, uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, let me see if I can go ahead and connect to this. But it, essentially what this allows you to do is normally, right, I think that when you've wanted, always wanted to kind of, let's say, transfer files, um, to other other devices in the past, right? Even through Bluetooth, you have to like pair a lot of things, or you have to connect a cable. Um, you know, connecting a cable definitely isn't bad. It's fast, it's efficient, it works. But you've got to make sure a connection with things being wireless. We've wanted to try to do things to make it a little bit more flexible. So what we now have the option to do is, if let's say we have a file that we want to send to a different device under the Wi-Fi Go Suite, we can actually right-click on it. And as long as you have that software installed on the device that you're look you, you the uh, with excuse me with the software package, you can go ahead and go right click send to, and you can see here on the screen how it actually shows like uh, the last item I tried to do it with and sent files to was my Transformer Prime that I had connected, um, and so that's really nice because you don't actually have to uh, do any type of pairing or any type of complicated setup. All you're going to have to do is essentially just have this. Uh, be linked in terms of that, and then I could right-click this and send that file to it. So very simple. Huh. So it's a very nice option, you That's know, cool. like if you have like a, you know, a, a tablet or phone or something like that, and you don't want to have to go through the whole pairing or, you know, syncing process, but you just want to send over maybe some new photos, some new music, some new videos, and all you have to do is just... What technology is that feature using? Um, that feature is, it's it's based off of an underlying support in the wireless controller called Wi-Fi Direct, but since not all controllers support it, we're actually using some special protocol point-to-point -point transmission. Okay. Um, so that is some some ASUS secret sauce, is, let's say. <laughs> um, the cool part is, is that with the software client actually installed on both systems, we can go back and forth. So I could actually just as easily right-click the file here and send to the desktop and go that way, or I can go the other way. Now somebody uh, is asking in here, can you do that through the Ethernet ports? Like if you connect this PC directly to the, to the wireless router, can you use do the same functionality if you're not necessarily using the Wi-Fi of the Wi-Fi Go on the motherboard? Oh, okay, okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, not in the current software package. I think that in, in that type of situation that uh, we're trying to enable, I guess, an ecosystem where the devices don't need to be required more so. Because mm -hmm. if usually you're making a connection, you've already got that device connected to the right. network, right? Um, but, you know, that's definitely a good point and something that, you know, I, I'm sure we can pass over to our team to think about, you know, trying to add network-centric devices that are already physically connected as becoming a right-click send to option too. Yeah. Yeah, very okay. cool. Um, any other questions that we got there? I've, I've kind of been watching them and hitting them up as we go. Okay. So I, I think we might be good there.
Cool. Um, so, so I think that that gives us, you know, a cool little overview of some of the stuff yeah. that we're doing there. That's, like I said, that's uh, it's, it's only part of it. We're going to go through some more stuff. We're going to do some overclocking. We're going to do some uh, yeah. some of the other connectivity options and things like that. Maybe talk a little bit about this board uh, that we've not allowed to talk about live yet. Um, but we want to thank everybody for joining in the live stream. We had a lot of fun. Uh, sorry about the little delay we had in between, but it seems to have worked out pretty well. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. I'd like to thank everybody too for taking time. Last thing about the Zonar card we discussed. Yeah, which one? Uh, they wanted a little, just a little bit more detail on that. That was the uh, DGX. You said that just came out. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, both the DGX and the DSX literally just launched. Okay. Yeah. So um, there are updated versions of the current DG and the uh, excuse me, the DG and the DX. Uh, but they're the PCIe versions of the cards instead of being PCI based. Um, we've made an update to full 192K support for both of those. Okay. Um, with an update to the ASIO driver of 2.2 compliance and um, some slight changes to some of the actual operating, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the controllers on there, such as the, the DAC and uh, the op amp amplifier. So um, all improvements, though, definitely awesome cards, especially the DG, um, which is really kind of the proponent at value. You know, uh, a lot of people think to get much better quality, or think it's, they have to buy like a much higher end sound card. DG, a lot of times you can get between like 20 or 30 bucks, and it's, it's a really great investment, cool. I think. Yeah. There you go, guys. Uh, everybody seems very thankful. They seem impressed with you. So uh, congratulations <laughs> on that. Um, thanks for hanging out with us all afternoon today. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to do more of these types of events throughout the months to come. So make sure you uh, check out PCPer.com all the time. We're always going to have a, a schedule on the right-hand side of our site there. It shows you what upcoming events we have live. We always do our podcast live. We always do This Week at Computer Hardware Live. And uh, we did a GTX 680 event with NVIDIA. One Z77 event with Asus, and uh, we'll have more of this stuff planned in the not very distant future. So make sure you're always checking out PC Perspective for that. I want to thank you guys again for for coming out. Uh, thank JJ for your time and for thank you giving away some cool stuff to everybody. Not everybody, but to some people. Yeah, yeah, to, to the good. guys that were in the know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are going to cancel the stream from here. We might replay it. We might do something. I don't know. We'll see. But. Uh, Thank you guys again, and if you have any questions, you can email me directly, ryan at pcper.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, or, or you can look at our facebook.com slash pcper page. There's all kinds of ways uh, to get a hold of us. So thanks a lot, guys, and uh, make sure you ch check out the upcoming Z77 reviews at yeah, pcper.com. Definitely. Thank you again, guys. Be sure to check out pcper.com for more reviews and information on everything PC hardware.